Hey y'all, N4H and H here, check it out. M3.9, that's the x-ray value right now. So we have a medium class solar flare. Uh, the last one I tracked was uh, M1.8, that's, that's how high it got. This one just jumped literally five minutes ago, it was a C8.9. And now it just jumped to M3.9. Uh, of course, this, these medium flares, uh, what they can cause is a blackout of HF communications on the sunny side of the earth for an hour plus or minus, usually. Uh, what we don't want to see is an X class. That's the next scale up. So there's A, B, C. Those are all, you know, okay for us. Then there's M, medium, and then X. X is really bad uh, because that can cause health issues and, and uh, power grid problems. But right now we're looking at an M3.9, so we're definitely gonna see some HF issues. I haven't turned on the radio to see, I just wanted to quickly get this shot and out to you guys. But uh, yeah, M3.9. I'll go turn on the FTDX10 while I'm talking to you here. And get over to an antenna. I'll go to 10 meter band. I know y'all don't see it right now. I've got, I'm trained on the uh, HF clock, running the ham clock software. Just wanting to see if it goes from M3.9 to any higher. Well, definitely, <laughs> definitely not seeing anything, any action on, uh, 10 meters, try a different antenna, no, oh look, M5.9, okay, I was hoping that we would get to see that change, wow, how high will it go, I'll let the video play for a bit, and I'll keep it trained on the clock while I check the bands, So that's 10 meters, nothing happening. I'm gonna try, uh, I'll try 15 meters. Switch over to an antenna for 15 meters. That's my vertical. Pushcraft R5. Because I don't have the amplifier or tuner plugged in. Uh, we've had lightning storms here recently and I've just been keeping everything unplugged and grounded. Yeah, nothing legit. Oh man, how about this? M5.9. How high will it go, y'all? Let's see, I'm gonna try Okay, now this is 15 meters FT8. I'm getting some signals. They're not super strong. Uh, but I am getting some signals on FT8 on 15 meters. Oh, that one's fairly strong. You can tell by the pure tone. Let me go try 10 meters FT8. 10 meters. I'm just keeping it trained on there for you guys to watch while I work with the radio here. This is the highest I've seen in during solar cycle 25. It's great having these, uh, these ham clocks. Now this one here is the HF clock. I keep it focused on more of the solar activity. I have uh, it runs ham clock software, but it's the latest versions of ham clock software. Oh, look at there, M6. It just hit M6.0. Regrettably, the processor in the HF clock, the ESP model you're looking at, can't handle all of the features in the latest ham clock update. There's another product available from the makers of HF clock, that, which is viridium.com. 
they make one called the HF Clock Raspberry Pi, which is a little gray box with a bunch of ports on it, including HDMI and USB. And you just supply a monitor and a mouse, and it's fast. It can handle the new features. Okay, there we go. That's 10 meters FT8. So for you FT8 enthusiast, you'd probably be delighted to know that FT8 is getting through here with an M6. Not super strong, but it's getting through. That's an S4 right there you're listening to. Like I said, I'm just keeping it trained on the HF clock. I'll quickly move over and let you see the radio display. See so S4. So if you're wondering what an M class can do, but how would you communicate if you have an M class? Uh, FT8 can still get through. Looks like. Let, yep. See M6.0. Now I'm going to I'm going to try a CW. Just tune around. See if I hear anybody on CW. Let me try 15 meters, CW. While you watch the ham clock, HF clock, running ham clock software. No, no activity in the CW portion of the band. So you FT8 enthusiasts should be delighted to know that you still have signal right now. Now, could it be a coincidence that FT8 uh, signals are out there right now and no CW? I mean, it could be. CW is not as popular as FT8. Let me try another band. Just for grins, we'll go to 20 meters. Very weak signal there at 14275. Okay, and there's one at 14.173. Try a different antenna. Okay, he's an S7. Oh, that one just hit S9. Not bad, but not great. Because I can tell he's a strong station normally. I know that voice. <laughs> I know he's usually stronger than that. And we'll, you know, look at the VOACAP data here. Now that, that's for Western Australia. Let me Let me see. Just trying the Western U.S. Now, Voacap, think, Voacap thinks I should have some coverage on 20 meters. See the green there? And I do right now. To the northwest. See, I, I put the DX, green DX dot at the northwest. Looks like M6.0 is going to be the peak, I guess. Hope you're hanging in there with me. I'm, I'm making this video longer for a reason because I wanted you to see this in you know, almost real time as I film it. And I'm going to try to put this video out 
shortly after I film it. All right, I'm going to switch over to 40 meters. Okay, nice strong signal there on 40 meters at um, 7.207, well over S9. So it's not affecting... It's not affecting 40 meters at this point. It, you know, it's mostly going to affect the higher frequencies. And I don't know if you know this or not. Let me just point this out, that as we are heading up to the top of the bell curve for cycle 25, that is solar cycle 25, you're, you will see more and more of these, uh, the flare activity it's, you know, we need sunspots and uh, com coming along with that type of activity, we get these flares. I was wanting to see if that one's going to start to head back down, then I'll stop the video. I might edit the video maybe for length so you don't have to just sit there and stare at that the whole time. But I thought it'd be interesting to see if it exceeds M6. Yeah, 40 meters is intact. You know, I tell people all the time, I hope you've watched the video this far. A lot of people miss a lot of information. And how do I know this? Because I get questions that have been answered in videos. People look at the title of the video and then they'll get whatever the title's about and they don't watch the whole video. I throw in all kinds of stuff because my videos are more situational. If something comes to mind, even if the video is about a different subject, if something comes to mind while filming that video, I may point out something else. All right, see there, it just dropped to M5.4. So it looks like it peaked out at M6. That's pretty stout. But yeah, you know, the thing is, we need to be mindful of what's going to happen during a solar cycle and as it approaches its peak. We're going to see more of this type of activity. Don't be too concerned, though, with an M. I mean... An hour plus or minus of an of interruption is what it's generally going to be on the sunny side of the earth. And here, you know, here it hit M6 and 40 meters is still working. So here's, here's the bonus for this video if you've watched this far. I've said this in other places too, but you may have missed it. People who don't watch all of my videos, if they just skip them over because they go, oh, well, I don't have that radio. Mm, man, you're missing it. Because I don't. While I do have some radio tutorials, my channel is mostly about operating techniques and just general amateur radio uh, principles. So I throw in all kinds of things in the videos. And so there may be something in an FTDX 5000 video and you go, well, I have an FT710, I'm not gonna watch that video. Well, you may be missing out on all kinds of other stuff. So for example, one of the things that I've pointed out many times is that 40 meters is the best band for amateur radio, in my humble opinion. And I'll tell you why. I've been through several of these solar cycles now. Well, uh, when I got my license, cycle 21 was, was just coming down from its peak. And here we are at cycle 25. Yeah, I'm at, and by the way, I think of life in terms of some solar cycles. Isn't that crazy? Um, I guess that's a ham thing. So like at my age now, I, I hope to have at least one more, maybe two solar cycles in me. Okay, so during cycle 24, which was pretty bad, the, uh, I, should, I should show you, it's going to make this video long, but I want to give you a bon another bonus here. But let me finish up about 40 meters. So 40 meters, I call it the 23-hour band because... I've literally stayed up 24 hours a couple of times, and I can tell you that that band gives you regional coverage during the day, you know, a few hundred miles, and then DX at night. And it will hold pretty steady all the way up until 4 or 5 in the morning here in the east, where I am. And then you get a little bit of a, a down downfall in it, and then it comes right back. It is literally a 23-hour band. The other bands have their time periods where they work great and then they shut down. So 40 meters, if, if I tell people, 
when in doubt, put a 40 meter antenna up. When in doubt, go to 40 meters. If you're setting up a mobile and you really can, let's say you're just going to put a ham stick on there, 40 meters. It's just the go-to band. And it got us through the abysmal cycle 24. Now I'm going to I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to, uh, let's see. I can wait till it cycles around again, but I think I'll just turn the rest of these off. And I only want to see sunspot number. Okay, see it's 173, which is good. Above 100 is good. Look at the solar flux index, 233. Those are great numbers. Now, what I wanted you to see there is the sunspot history. Once I have this up on sunspot number here, I can tap it and then it gives me the sunspot history. So look at there, 1960 was glorious. Look at that. That's 1960. So here, it, but then look at the next solar cycle. It was a real downer, huh? Like 1930, that wasn't great either. Uh, 1910, I just think the... The Titanic sunk in 1912. There's the solar cycle they had to work with with their spark gap uh, transmitters. Let me go back to that again. All right, now, what I want you to see is here's 1980. I got into amateur radio in 1982. So right there, solar cycle 21 was beginning to come down. But it was great. I got to tell you, I took it for granted. And I'll bet if you're new, you're taking this propagation we have right now for granted because this is not always the case. Look, it's going to bottom out here. I mean, it did bottom out there. Now, uh, oop, it timed out. Let me go back. All right, so decent solar cycles there in 80. Not quite as good around 92, 82, 92. And then, uh, you know, look at this, 2002 or three ish 2010 bottomed out, 2020, see, we bottomed out, and there's where we are right now. Now, it's, it shows that it's peaked and coming back down. It still could go back, spike back up and come back down again. You can see over here how they do that, because I figure we got about an, another year, maybe a year and a half, before it peaks out. I could be wrong. Even the experts say, yeah, every 11 years, yeah, well, it, it's not always exact. But um, you can see probably by 2030, we're going to be bottoming out again, just looking at that trend. So, you know, there's another feature on the HF clock that, you know, if you didn't know about that, it's interesting, you guys, especially if you're new, you can go back and look at this solar activity we've experienced in the glory days of amateur radio. And like, and like I showed you a minute ago, 1960-ish, uh, there we go. 1960-ish was glory, glory uh, days. I mean, really late 50s, late 50s. Okay, well, I hope you found the video helpful and informative. It's dropped down to an M4.4 now, so I think that the M6.0 uh, is about as high as we're going to see for this one. And we may have some more of these as, as the solar peak nears us. All right, hey, thanks again for watching videos on my channel and for sort of supporting my channel. You can always uh, click that little heart symbol down below there if you want to make a one-time donation. Or even better, the reason this video is available to you now is because of the support of what I call long haulers through the Patreon program. Um, that's patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. And these long haulers are people who support me for one, two, three years or more. And uh, on an annual basis, they make these videos possible. So uh, if you wouldn't mind joining that team, then you can help make sure that I can continue to bring this type of content. Uh, please hang on for 30 more seconds. I want to recognize five of those Patreon team members that I call long haulers who helped bring this video to you today. 73 from N4 H&H. &H.